This is Jack Jackson. In this video, we're going to program or we're going to start talking about an inverse binomial probability function, leading to programming it in a TI 84 and a TI Inspire. So, the inverse binomial probability problem is given values for n, p, and c. Remember, the n and p define the binom which binomial probability we're talking about, which distribution. And c is going to be a cumulative probability. Remember the meaning of these variables. N is the number uh, in the, of trials or the sample size. P is the probability of a success each time, which is the same in a binomial probability. X is the um, uh, number of successes in that sample. And then C is a cumulative probability we want to have. So we want to find a value where the binomial CDF of NPA is approximately C. And I'm using this. TI-84 notation here for the binomial CDF. Uh, for the TI Inspire, this would be binomial CDF NP0, uh, A. Now, unfortunately, unlike the geometric distribution, there is no formula without a summation for a binomial CDF function. Even though the binomial CDF function shortcut is programmed in the calculator. That program, though, however, makes use of actually going through a sum. Uh, fortunately, however, there is another function that's in the calculator which will at least get us close to where we want to be for an inverse binomial function. Now, as we will see later in Unit 3, uh, when we start talking about continuous distributions, a binomial distribution can be approximated by a normal distribution with the same mean and standard deviation. And uh, there are certain conditions when that's a better approximation than others, but we can use that as a basic approximation. Now, recall for a binomial distribution, the mean is n times p. The standard deviation is the square root of n times p times q. And so the function that will get us close is an inverse normal. Okay, so for, an, for a normal distribution, uh, it's used so much that there's a built-in inverse uh, probability function for a normal distribution. So we're going to use this inverse norm and what you put in is the cumulative probability C, the mean which is going to be the mean NP and the standard deviation which is going to be the square root of NPQ. That's going to give us at least a, a value, an output value that's going to be close to the A that we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to use that to write a program for the TI-84 and a function for the TI-INSPIRE which will start with the three whole number, three whole number values of A that are near this initial estimate given by this inverse norm, and then we'll find their cumulative probabilities, and then we'll display uh, a portion of the CDF table with those three uh, X values and their CDF values, and from that, hopefully, it will capture the ones that we want to uh, to be interested in. 